Are you tired of sitting down during the lockdown? Well, lockdown's over and it's time to get up and dance with our latest movie, Ghost with the Invisible Bikini from 1966. No, Bob, it's not transparent. It's invisible, just like when the Sue Storm goes invisible, you don't see her clothes wandering around without her. Hi there, folks. Welcome to the show. We here at Creature Features now in our 13th year. I, of course, am your host, Al Omega, the alpha and omega of all things science fiction and horror. Some of you may have noticed that it's summer and some of the COVID restrictions have been lifted a bit. However, rather than going out, some of you would rather stay in a little while longer. So we thought we'd bring the beach to you with The Ghost in the Invisible Bikini from 1966. This movie was directed by Don Weiss, and he left us in 2000. But he worked on such great films like Return to Planet of the Apes, really one of the better sci-fi movies. Beyond Westworld and The Munster's Revenge. I think that's the one where Lily finally clocks Grandpa upside the head for all of his shenanigans. <sighs> Mr. Weiss was a veteran who served with the 1st Motion Picture Unit of the U.S. Army Air Corps. This was written by Lewis M. Hayward, who left us in 2002. And he worked on things like Scream and Scream Again, the abominable Dr. Vibes. And who slew Auntie Rue? We may get to have that one. He was an Air Force veteran, so maybe writing sort of came naturally to him, or at least it was a lot less dangerous. This was also written by Elwood Ullman. Sadly, they left the building in 1985, and he worked on things like The Bowery Boys Meet the Monsters. Snow White and the Three Stooges, and Ma and Pa Kettle in Waikiki. And if you know those movies, you are old. I think that's the Ma and Pa Kettle where he goes in the hotel room, turns on the heat lamp, and gives himself a sunburn while he's trying to shave. It's said that he liked to write comedy from a very early age and would submit stories to the newspapers and something called Captain Billy's Whizbang. Kind of sounds like something your doctor diagnoses you with after he tells you to turn your head and cough. Now, this movie has lots of people in it that have had great acting careers, and some of them you may have heard of. We'll start with a corpse, being played by the wonderful Boris Karloff. I'm sure he always knew that some of his best work would be done after his death. He left us in 69, and I do believe, I do, that we have an interview with his daughter, Sarah Karloff. We show a lot of his movies here, including The Island of the Snake People. Remember that one? That was good. And he is considered, of course, one of the greats of horror. We have a, a statue of him right over here. If you've never noticed, that's Boris Karloff. He actually used to live in the area. And there's a house you can go see if you want to go up some very, very steep steps. 
He's a handsome fellow and well-spoken, but I never looked at him much as a ladies' man, but apparently he was. Six ex-wives. He and Mickey Rooney should get together and form a club. You may notice he has a slight lisp. I bring this up only because there are people out there that have less than perfect diction, and I want them to know that you can become a movie star even with a lisp. Not one to fear treading the boards. He had his first play make it to Broadway, and it was a version of Arsenic and Old Lace, and they wrote a special role for him. I just love it when they do stuff like this. In this one, he played a man who had terrible plastic surgery done by Dr. Einstein. And now he thinks he looks like Boris Karloff. I can just see him capering around. Don't, I'm not actually Boris Karloff. I love it when you see a serious actor that's capable of pulling off good comedy. And I do wish there was some video of that running around, or film. Now in the part of the ghost, we have the very lovely Susan Hart. And she was in such things as Chrome and Hot Leather, the movie, not the outfit, <laughs> City in the Sea, and The Slime People. During high school, she started doing a little modeling, and shortly after, signed up with a theatrical agency. Now, she helped raise money for a pediatric wing at UCLA Medical Center and helped complete, in an executive capacity, two movies, The Legend of Hell House and Dirty Mary and Crazy Larry. Those two movies are like opposite ends of the spectrum as far as you can go. She then went on to have something of a career in ice skating, so not just a pretty face. In the part of Chuck Phillips, we have Tommy Kirk, who I watched as a young person in all those Disney movies and wondered how they shrunk him back down so they could make him into Wesley Crusher. I have no idea if they're actually related, but gosh, they do look similar. In his stints with Walt Disney, he did things like The Swiss Family Robinson, Babes in Toyland, and Old Yeller, which scarred all of us for life. His last movie was in 2001, which was Education of a Vampire. But he also did things like uh, Billy the Kid vs. Frankenstein, Attack of the 60-Foot Centerfold. Mom says she had a part in that, or at least in the inspiration of it. Maybe 60 foot wide and not a centerfold. I don't know. Sadly, his career came to an abrupt stop with Disney, when his then 21-year-old self was found in an inappropriate relationship and, of course, in the possession of drugs. He kept working and wound up on a number of stage productions and a number of so-so science fiction movies. At one point, he stepped away from the acting and opened a successful carpet and upholstery cleaning company. You know, the hearse could use a good cleaning. I wonder if he's still in it. But then he started working in movies again, and we don't know what's going on with him now. Is he rug-sucking or just taking it easy? We wish him the best. In the part of Reginald Ripper, we have Basil Rathbone, who sadly left us in 67. I always thought he was sort of like the evil version of David Niven. Two of them should be in a movie together doing something. He, of course, is known for his series of Sherlock Holmes movies and Robin Hood, and also a number of sci-fi and horror movies like Hillbillies in a Haunted House and Queen of Blood. Let's not forget Comedy of Terror. That was our very first show we did way back when. Man, does that bring back some memories. We were so broke, the first guest we ever had was actually the dead rat we found on the set when we cleaned up. But let's get back to Mr. Rathbone. He was born in South Africa, and in school, he excelled in fencing. Very much so. I guess that kind of explains the whole Robin Hood thing. During the First World War, he served as a second lieutenant 
in the Liverpool Scottish 2nd Battalion and worked in military intelligence, and what else with him, and received the Military Cross for bravery. You know, he traveled around doing a one-man show called An Evening with Basil Rathbone. Wouldn't it have been great to be able to catch some of that? When the Second World War broke out, he actually wrote to the ministry asking if he could still serve. But sadly, they said he was too old. He always said to never regret anything you've done with a sincere affection. Nothing is lost that is born of the heart. It's an excellent thought for everyone to hold on to. Now, for all of you that grew up with those beach movies with Annette Funicello, eh, tonight's movie is just like that. Except it's not at the beach, and Annette's not in it. We do have Eric Von Zipper. Get that, you're old. Uh, played by the great Harvey Limbeck. The Von Zipper's Rat Pack of bikers were always on the beach, and I think I hear them running around outside now. Sadly, he left us in 82, but while he was in things like Beach Party and Beach Blanket Bingo, we did see him in numerous TV roles like All in the Family and The Love Boat. The Love Boat is taking another cruise for you. Yes. He was also in several episodes of Night Gallery. He is of the people, and he started out, surprisingly, as a dancer. Uh, during World War II, he served in the Army, but afterwards he went back to college and got a degree in radio arts and had wanted to get into doing sports radio. But one of his teachers told him to go try the theatrical productions. And the rest, as they say, is history. In the part of Lily Morton, we have Deborah Walling. Now, she left us in 2001. And she was certainly no stranger to zany teenage movies of the time. You know, her last movie was actually, uh, well, last appearance was actually on Baywatch. She gives you this nice sort of balance to everything. Start out with the beach movies, end on Baywatch. You should have seen her in a performance in Route 66. Yeah. Great stuff. Now, tonight's movie is a fun flick. And it has an ensemble cast with a bunch of people that should be familiar to you, at least their faces. Like Jesse White, who plays Mr. Hulk. He left us in 97 and did things like Mad, 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 Mad World. Harvey with uh, James Stewart. And his last screen appearance was on Seinfeld. As Malcolm, we have Francis X. Bushman, a very serious actor, who is in things like Phantom Planet, and the 1925 version of Ben-Hur, and even Dr. Kildare. As Chicken Feather, we have Benny Rubin. Now, he left the building in 86, and he was in things like the Shaggy D.A., Wonton Ton, the dog who saved Hollywood, and Kolchak, the Night Stalker. Now, we have so much to see, and maybe to do, so let's get our go-go boots on, or maybe our Moondoggy hat, break out the popcorn and soda, maybe the vinyl if they have any, and let's get into tonight's movie, The Ghost in the Invisible Bikini from 1966. Yes, Bob, I'm absolutely sure there's no nudity in tonight's movie. Anyway, I'm here at Monster Blue Zoo with Sarah Karloff. Thank you so much, ma'am, for taking a moment to talk to me. My pleasure. You know, I've always wanted to tell you, you look fabulous. I, I, I just love the look. You look, I think noble is the word I, I'm going for here. So, how is the convention treating you? Oh, beautifully. This is a wonderful venue, and the people could not be nicer. My father's fans are just... So genuine and lovely and respectful of the legacy he left. Well, we do try to be. We don't want him coming back after us. He wouldn't dream of doing so. Well, 
that was one of the features of Boris Karloff is that even though he played bad guys, many of them were flawed, weak in, in certain ways that which made them sort of endearing to you. He played many of his roles with great empathetic um, characteristics. It's okay. Now we understand because we loved watching him, especially we have, uh, was this The Raven right here? Yeah, um, yes. Where, uh, of course, this being very much later in his life, and he had a, a back injury from doing Frankenstein, and so they, both the wizards in, in this one, uh, Vincent Price and Boris Karloff, decided at their age they were going to do the battle sitting down, and I appreciate that more and more as I get older. Well, Vincent and uh, Peter Lorre and my father really enjoyed doing both the remake of The Raven and, um, um, oh, what was it? Oh, Comedy of Terrors. And they had an opportunity to spoof their own boogeyman images, and they had a wonderful time on the sets, and they enjoyed, they enjoyed one another's company, and they had great respect for each other, and um, they were fun sets to visit. They were wonderfully fun films to see. And they just had a great, great time with each other. Very respectful of each other, but very, um, they just, they love spoofing their own boogeyman images. No, I love Comedy of Terror because, of course, that one had Orangey the Cat in it. You just don't get a cat that gets billing these days in a movie. So, I, I, I do really enjoy Comedy of Terror, that one. But David Niven as well in it, wasn't it? No, it wasn't it? No, it was uh, in Comedy of Terrors, it was, no, in The Raven, it was Jack Nicholson. Yes. But David Niven was not in Comedy of Terrors. Oh, well, I'll, I'll look him up later on IMDb. He just had the line, what place be this? It was Basil Rathbone. Basil Rathbone. You can understand I could get the two of those confused. They're very British men. Well, you've got fans massing here, and we can't keep the fans waiting, so I'm going to let you go. Once again, thank you so much, Sarah Karloff, for taking a moment to talk with me. Thank you so much. Thank I you. Enjoyed the interview. In the endless reaches of the universe, there once existed a planet known as Krypton, a planet that burned like a green star in the distant heavens. There, civilization was far advanced and had brought forth a race of supermen whose mental and physical powers were developed to the absolute peak of human perfection. But there came a day when giant quakes threatened to destroy Krypton forever. One of the planet's leading scientists, sensing the approach of doom, placed his infant son in a small rocket ship and sent it hurtling in the direction of the Earth just as Krypton exploded. The rocket ship sped through star-studded space landing safely on Earth with its precious burden, Krypton's sole survivor. A passing motorist found the uninjured child and took it to an orphanage. As the years went by and the child grew to maturity, he found himself possessed of amazing physical powers. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. The infant of Krypton is now the man of steel. Superman! To best be in a position to use his amazing powers in a never-ending battle for true justice, Superman has assumed the skies of Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. Kent, I want to see you. Just received another threatening note. Okay, Mr. White. Lois, another note from the Mad Scientist. Coming in, Chief. Now listen to this warning. He plans to strike tonight. Beware, you fools. My electrothanasia ray strikes tonight at 12. Total destruction will come to those who laughed at me and failed to heed my warning. Beware, I strike at midnight. This nut may prove dangerous. Kent, you help Lois follow up her lead. She may have an angle on this thing. Yes, sir. But, Chief, I'd like the chance to crack the story on my own. Well, no. Thanks, Chief. But, Lois. Chief, don't you think that's a dangerous mission?
reporter for the... The story. I'll give you the greatest story of destruction the world has ever known. This looks like a job for Superman.
Congratulations, Lois. That was a great scoop. Yes, Chief. Thanks to Superman. Cecily, my dear, looking lovely as usual. Hey, wait a minute. You're dead. You've been dead for 30 years. 32, Hiram Baby. Hiram Baby? <laughs> well, you look lovely just the same. Hiram, let me clue you in. You have a terrible problem. Good heavens, my dear girl. What problem could I possibly have? I'm very wealthy, I'm very healthy. And very dead. I beg your pardon? No need to. You're dead. Just like me. Oh? Oh. You know, I don't like this. I don't like this one tiny little bit. No one does, Hiram, baby. That's why I'm here to help you get up there. Is there a chance for me? Uh-huh. What do I have to do? Well, now, why don't you just get out of your nice little coffin and I'll give you the scam. 
You have 24 hours in which to mastermind one good deed. If you want to spend eternity with me. Good deed? Good heavens. I'm a little out of practice. I wouldn't know where to begin. Well, I can't coach you. It has to be your idea, Pussycat. Oh, and another thing. You can't leave the crypt. I can't leave. Then how can I do a good deed? Well, anything you want done, I'll do. Ah. And if you're successful, there's a bonus in it for you. A bonus? Tell me, what is it? Well, uh, you'll notice there's a discrepancy in our ages. Well, since you mention it, if you look closely, um, well, yes. Well, you see, that's because I stopped aging when I was in the accident. And you, my poor friend, kept getting older and older. Never mind that. Tell me about the bonus. Well, the bonus is, if you succeed in doing one good deed, they promised you'd be young again. Young again? Oh, Cecily, my dear. Then once more, you and I could trip together hand in hand through the sweet-smelling fields of new-mown clover to enjoy the moonlight of a warm summer's night. Ugh, let's not get sick, nature, you baby. Uh, Time's a wasted. You've got to pull off a good deed, remember? As I know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Wait a minute, sir. How long have I been uh, <coughs> dead? Mm, you're hardly cold. One week. One week? Then tomorrow, the reading of my will takes place. And if I know Reggie Ripper, my attorney, he'll try to keep all the money for himself. Now, what you have to do is to see that my rightful heirs get the money. That will be my good deed. Are you sure they'll make me young again up there? They never go back on their promise. Good. Now, the first thing for you to do is to try to get into my house. But how will we keep in touch with each other? We should have a walkie-talkie. I have something better. Do you remember the old crystal ball shtick? Ah, oh, it never worked. Uh, try it now. Not bad. Ah, the first of my heirs. Chuck Phillips. Not very bright, but a nice boy. Heir number two. Lily Norton. Not very bright either, but a beautiful figure. So I've been told. And heir number three, Myrtle Forbush. Now, what can I say about her in front of you? Ah, Reggie Ripper, my wicked attorney, and his vile sidekick, Jay Sinister Hulk. Really, my dear chap, when you threw in with me, I told you there might be some risks involved. I know, I know, and I'm game, but listen. Is this joint really haunted like they say? Certainly not. Don't be ridiculous. Now, look here, Hulk. There's a million dollars involved in this estate plus the house, and your job is to uh, take care of the other heirs. Follow me? Yeah, I'm way ahead of you. The job will be done very neat and tidy, or my name ain't Jay Sinister Hulk. <laughs> my associates are on the way now. Well, I hope they get you soon. My guests are due in a minute. They will, they will. This is the greatest bunch of cutthroats I ever had the pleasure of working with. Excellent. Once they eliminate the other heirs, the fortune will be all mine. Uh, ours. Mine. Ours? Mine, old bean. What? Yours, old bean. That, my dear Cecily, is the enemy. For my good deed, you're to harass them and help the young people. Gotcha, Hiram. You better be leaving, my dear. My heirs are arriving for the reading of my will. As you say, Hiram. Wait a minute. The door's that way. But who needs it?
we are. All four heirs to this house and fortune neatly assembled. What goes on? A seance. I think it's only fitting to thank Mr. Hiram Stokely. Am I right, Buster? If you insist. Oh, I don't insist. But I get very mean when I'm cross, so sit down and be sociable. All right. I hope this works. I normally don't communicate with ghosts until midnight. Night rate's cheaper. <laughs> this is so silly. Why do we have to sit here? I'm surprised at you, Cookie. After all, Hiram invited us to come. We are his heirs. No one is officially an heir unless present at the reading of the will, and that doesn't happen until midnight. So if you'll kindly get on with it. All right. Let's start holding hands. I think I'm going to be sicker. Quiet, please. Ghosts do not like noises. Now, if you'll all just close your eyes and concentrate. Oh, Hiram Stokely. We are all sitting around waiting for you. Dear sweet Lily Morton, Chuck Phillips, your respected attorney, Reginald Ripper, and me, Myrtle Forbush. Oh, please, won't you visit us, Hiram? We are so anxious to talk to you. If you hear my voice, give us a sign. <laughs> It's a no! What a ridiculous way to send messages. Well, what's it say? What's it say? Is it from Hiram? Those who remain here tonight will not be around tomorrow. Wait a minute. Now, it's obvious someone's trying to scare us out of here. Oh, yes, and they succeeded. I'm leaving. But if you leave before they read the will, you forfeit your share. It seems I've reconsidered. Delighted. Uh, uh, Perhaps you'd better go on without me, Miss Forbush. Maybe I'm uh, interfering with your communications. Oh, all right, all right. Here, hold hands. Oh, oh, have we displeased you, Hiram? What can we do to make you forgive us? Oh, please, speak to us, Hiram. Send us a friendly message. <laughs> Message. Good heavens. Everybody all right? Yeah, we're all right. And whoever did that, we're not scared! Speak for yourself, John. Oh, come now, let's not go blaming people for these strange happenings around here. This is a very old house, and, uh, well, chandeliers do fall. Oh, sure, all the time. And the mail arrives on knives that stick themselves into chairs and people. My dear little nephew, Bobby. Nephew? And Bobby, this is Mr. Ripper, our host. Now, how'd you do? How do you do? Hey, come on, gang. Geronimo! <laughs> Cecily, my dear, that sinister face, pay no attention to it, is just Malcolm, my butler. Terribly inefficient, I might add. When you find, when you find, you're in trouble, you need help, you need help, I'm a dub, but one thing, but one thing, just remember to do, let yourself go, let yourself go, yell Geronimo, Geronimo, that's when I'll, hey, hey. come running to you, I'll come yeah. running to you, hey, hey.
right beside you to help. You to help and to guide you until, until baby we see it through. Postpone the seance, that's all. Hiram Stokely would never show up with all that racket going on. Unless his ghost digs the Watusi. <laughs> I could have told you nothing would have come of it, Miss Forbush. After all, how could the old pirate in a few minutes come all the way up here from all the way down there? <laughs> Ripper, you haven't told me yet uh, how you like my little nephew. Oh, I, I, I didn't know you had any living relatives. Well, I don't, unless you count Gugu. Gugu? <laughs> how about you two? Uh, are you uh, similarly endowed, I mean, with the living relatives? Well, I don't see what difference it makes, but no. I see. This Gugu appears to be a charming young lad. I'd like him to meet my daughter, Sinistra. Well, I... Sinistra? <laughs> You must be joshing. My dear young man, I am not a josher. Shall we? Delighted. Then there were two. Correction, one. I'm going to my room. Wait a minute. Now, we just met this morning. Now, I've heard of love at first sight, but never hate. Why? Because you're a fortune hunter. Me? A fortune hunter? Well, certainly. I mean, why would Hiram Stokely, a complete stranger, remember you in his will? Well, I don't know, but by the same token, why should he remember you? I mean, you never heard of him before either, did you? No. All right. Now, we both know someone's trying to scare us out of here. Now, if we team up, we'll be twice as strong. What do you say? All right, it's a deal. We will not be scared. A business relationship. Strictly business. Quite a turn you gave me there, Mr. Ripper. <laughs> hey, quite a turn. It's pretty good. <laughs> you get it? Time out is on, Miss Talk. And you sit here making insane jokes. Do you realize that I still have a full house? What's happened to your infernal helpers? Don't be impatient, boss. They'll be here. You told me that an hour ago. Mr. Hulk, say follow Highway 52. No can Miss Stokely House. Meet my train, okay? Well, what happened, House? Well, don't look at me. You're supposed to be the guy, Chicken Fat. No call Chicken Fat. Me Chicken Fat. <laughs> Nifty, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. How do you like this new bust up billboards game I invented? Oh, you're the greatest, boss. Yeah, no one rottener than you, boss. When something's rottener is invented, Eric Von Zipper will invent it. Right. And not only is it rotten, but it's nifty and safe. Anybody see any more billboards around here for us to bust up? Yeah, I think I see one over there, boss. Oh, yeah? Okay. Turn them over, group. Mmm. Fresh tracks. Four retreads. Me think. We finally find the right trail. Right trail? You couldn't find the right trail from a plate of beans to your big fat mouth. Now get in here and let me drive. Okay. Maybe change of luck, Prince. Good. Oh, shut up, Monster. We're just as hungry as you are. Oh, damn wild 
ones. Must be on leave of absence from Late Late Show. Oh, nobody'd be on this mangy cow path if they weren't headed for the Stokely estate. Mush! relationship. I mean, you look after me and, and I look after you and... Right. And with no romantic involvements. No romantic involvements because that way people might get hurt. We couldn't let that happen, could we? Right. Uh, I think I better go change now. Lily. Don't you think? I have to go. And don't forget. You don't have this business relationship with anybody else except me. Right. Business, they say. Monkey business, I say. Happy to see you're enjoying yourself, young man. Oh, uh, Mr. Ripper, this is Miss Vicki Orange. Hello. And a young exchange student from Italy, Miss Piccola Pete. Poopa. Oh, pardon me. Poopa. Oh, <laughs> I was uh, telling your aunt that I should like you to meet my daughter. Oh, he'd like to meet anybody's daughter. What's that? Oh, that's um, a subsonic whistle. It can only get through to people with a, an acutely developed sense of hearing. 
<laughs> Your daughter is acutely developed? Well, judge for yourself. She's acutely developed, all right. That's my little girl. You called, Daddy, dear? Yes, indeed I did. I want you to meet a very charming young man. Oh, what fun. Yes, isn't it? But first, we want to make a good impression, don't we? Oh, yes, Daddy, dear. So we'll um, take our glasses off, won't we? Uh, but when we take our glasses off, uh, we can't hardly see. Remember what I told you about passes and girls with glasses? Yes, Daddy, dear. Oh, you are a very nice young man. No, dear, not him. This very charming young man's name is Bobby. I'm Vicky. He's Miss Forbush's only living relative. I'm Vicky. I am Vicky. Follow me. Oh, anywhere. I'm Vicky. And who cares? The men do seem to like her for some reason. I can think of three reasons. 38, 24, 36. Three. That's better. Uh, Bobby, mm. do you like uh, surprises? Oh, I love them. That's good. Because you've got one coming now, love. Oh, boy. And I bet I know what that is. I bet you don't. Oh. What are you fixing? Relax. It's just... Orangeade with uh, a couple of my own special ingredients. Uh, how do you like the antique furniture? Oh. Well, I don't know. That's okay. Oh, it's great. It's really great. I bet it goes back to Louis the 15th. Here, Bobby, dear. Once you taste this, you'll never drink anything else. <laughs> Bobby? What? You're not drinking. I mean, I'm not very thirsty. Bobby, your dear sweet aunt is calling you. I think I hear my dear sweet aunt calling me. Oh, that's ridiculous. I have 20, 20, 20 hearing, and I don't hear a thing. 20, 20, 20. Yeah, and she's right out on the lawn. Oh, what difference does it make, just as long as we're together? Lover? Bobby? Oh, there you are. You are a shy one, aren't you? <laughs> I get it. Uh, you're so happy you're speechless. Come on, drink it. Pretty please? You are a stubborn one, aren't you? Well, I'll take care of that. Try to be indifferent to me. Don't think you're not falling for me. You're standing right on the brink of something bigger than you think. Don't try to fight it, baby. Just take a look into my eyes It's time you took the trip You're taking to paradise You know It's bigger than both of us You'll see I'm 
the girl you can trust You're gonna know how it feels You're falling head over heels Don't try to fight it, baby Don't try to fight it, baby said you didn't smoke. <laughs> Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and that candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Back to creature features. Now, as usual, this is the part of the movie where we talk about all the people we didn't talk about. And in this movie, well, there's a lot of people. Uh, Nancy Sinatra's in there trying her hand at acting. She's a lovely young woman in this. And she had a few good songs, one of which she sings here. Another singer of this is Piccola Pupa. Her name means little doll. She's uh, Italian, and she's one of those little girls that won a few talent shows and was skyrocketed into fame. Are you listening, Brittany? She did a couple of movies, some TV shows an album, and that was the end of it. <laughs> Princess Yolanda was played by Bobby Shaw Chance, who also did a lot of beach movies, and is still working. Her last movie is listed as Midnight in the Switchgrass. And last but not least, Monstro. The gorilla is played by George Barrow. He left us in 94, and he was in things like She-Demon and Frankenstein's Daughter. He even donned a very similar outfit for Robot Monster. Help me, Mayor! Indeed you did. Welcome, Princess. I'm Reginald Ripper. Mr. Ripper. I assumed as much. You're like a giant among men. Shrewd, <laughs> forceful, dominating, and rotten, too. <laughs> if you please, Princess, time is of the essence. Oh, by all means, Mr. Ripper. I think we're like birds of a feather. Vultures, that is. What's for heavens? What's that? Oh, just Monstro. Come on, I'll introduce you to him. Hey, Monstro! <laughs> Shut up, Monstro. Well, we might only be gone a little while. Princess, did you have to bring that monkey with you? How many times have I told you? When you do a job for me, park this peanut grinder in a zoo or something. Oh, 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 not that way, Princess. This calls for discretion. My four unwanted guests. I assume Mr. Hulk explained what you're to do. Him make broad hint. <laughs> Follow me. No, this way go. Here she is. My princess. I love her. Who them tree slop, boss? I don't know, but one of them looks like Sherlock Holmes. Hey, Prince! Where? Where 
is she? Where, where's my princess? She went right through the wall. Right oh, through the wall. Where did she go? She went right through the wall. Shut up! Jerome, you better not tell anybody about this. Shut up! Tell me the truth and nothing's going to happen to you. Where did she go? Right through the wall. Shut up! Jerome, tell me the truth and nothing's going to happen to you. Where did she go? Right through the wall. Don't ever lie to your leader. He ain't lying, boss. Shut up, you two. Show me. Show me, you stupid. Show me. You're screaming. Why are you screaming? Stupid. <clears throat> now, how could anybody walk through a stone wall? That ain't even human, uh, right? Boss, I think Shut up. Was... Shut up. I'm thinking. Now. The last time I seen her, she was standing over there with them three slobs, right? right? What she probably did was she walked around the, the side boss, of the house. I, I warned I, you. I warned you. I warned you. Don't talk. Don't talk when I'm thinking. But, boss, I... Shut up. You I told to shut up. Once more, J.D. Just once. Now, what we are... The boss is going to think we pushed him. Who is he going to be mad? It's going to be madder if we don't go pick him up. Get in there! Well, that's more like it. Now that we've formed our mutual protection society, we may as well be friendly. I'm not being friendly. I'm being scared. Ah, uh, there's nothing to be scared of. Not with me here. Oh! Nice try! Nice throw! Look, let's not be dopes and fall into the trap, huh? Someone's just trying to scare us out of here before the reading of the will. Somebody's trying to kill us. Look, I'm going back to the house. Wait, I'll go with you. Please, sir. I must talk to you. Sure. Sure. We'll have a nice long talk as soon as you learn some manners and stop throwing hatchets at people. No, no, I'm not responsible for any of the actions that have been taking place here. Oh, of course not. I've seen it. I know all the dialogue. You want me to leave this house, right? Exactly, sir. Well, I'm not. I'm going to be here at midnight when the will is read, and I'm going to be here tomorrow when the money is divided. If you must, sir, I beg you, be careful. Someone here is trying to kill you. And you know his name, right? Indeed I do, sir. And you're going to say, and his name is... And a phony knife is going to stab you in the chest. And you're going to roll up your eyes and make believe you're dead. Don't make sport of me, sir. I'm trying to save your life. I'm sorry, sir, but I've got a girl to follow. So long. Somebody is trying to kill you. His name is... <laughs> How I ever allowed myself to be hoodwinked into having him for my attorney is beyond me. And with that phony British accent. Oh, surely there must be something better for me to look at. If my mother could see me like this... Don't you think we're overdoing it? Just a little? In case like this, in my country we say, Se devi avere un amore, devi lottare col tuo cuore. What does that mean? Stand up and fight for what you think is right. Don't let anyone get in your way. Hey, hey, hey. Right down to the letter, you're gonna feel better. It's true, just do what I say. Hey, hey, hey. Stand up and fight for what you think is right. If you want things to go your way, hey, hey, hey. Don't hesitate a minute, it's your game, you win it. If you just do what I say, hey. Don't give in, not this season. You've got to win and that's enough reason. Stand up and fight for what you think is right. Today, hey, 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 move out, let them know it's your fault. You roll it, you see, it's the only way. You see, it's the only way. You see, it's the only way.
only way for you, but it's too far out for me. I think I'll settle for this. You gotta fight fire with fire, honey. Wear the bikini. It's just what the doctor ordered. Second thought, this might be just what the doctor ordered. Oh! What you do, you little woodwork? Boss, you keep telling me this joint ain't haunted. Well, explain some of them screwy things that are going on, like that self-propelling candelabra. No time for that now. Do you realize it's nine o'clock? And so far, not one single casualty. I'm going to read the will in three hours. Well, that's life, boss. It takes doing. Well, do it. Come on, get in here. Yeah. Get back yeah. 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 Oh! Ah, Mr. Ripper. I'm so glad you introduced little Bobby to Sinistra. She's so sophisticated and everything. She'll give him just what he needs. Would you mind if Bobby and I went out for a while? Mm -hmm. I'd uh, like to show him the sights. The sights aren't that bad right here. Oh, the city, I mean. I have uh, something special in mind. <laughs> Why, of course, dear. Uh, where do you want to go? Oh, just out on the veranda. It's so romantic and uh, so high. <laughs> the people look like uh, crawling insects below. Why, that'll be perfectly all right. Just don't stay out too long. Oh, this won't take long at all. Uh, good night, Papa. Well, good night, dear. Happy hunting. I mean, uh, uh, have a good time. what you get in high places? Whoa. Oh. Listen, whatever you get, that's what I got. Now, you just stay there a minute. I want to make sure this is the place. You hoo Goo goo. I think I hear my dear Aunt Myrtle calling me. ever learn to relax. Here, I'll massage your neck muscles for you. Ooh, aren't you built? Your poor muscles are so tense and so tight. But Sinistra knows how to relax you. Permanently. <laughs> One less finger in the jam pot. Won't Papa be delighted? Nikki? Nikki! Oh no, I can't be. Bobby. Bobby. Oh, no. 
No. No! Why do you? Because I'm afraid. Don't be afraid. And don't ooh, ooh, ooh. no more. Hmm? What are you doing out again? <gasps> Twelve bongs right in my ear. It's smart. Sip my that now. I thought I made it clear to you and your wretched crew that you were to dispose of everybody before I read the will. Well, we want to, but nobody stays put long enough. Excuses, excuses, excuses. Now, don't let me have to tell you again. Go on, get in there and get on with it. Get... Oh. Oh! Well, you're all comfortable. Let's get started, shall we? I, Harab Stokely, being of sound mind and body, uh, look, suppose I skip all the, excuse the expression, dead stuff. What? what? And get down to the bequests. That's what you're waiting for. I um, happen to know everything that's in this instrument because I drew it up myself. All Mr. Stokely's earthly possessions are to be divided up among the four of us Share and share alike. Yay! Not bad. It would be a good deal better if I knew where the money was. Yeah. What? I'm trying to tell you, the man had no bank accounts. As of this moment, the whereabouts of the money is a complete mystery. Oh! Oh! Then why? Why did you have to drag me all the way here from Lum Park? I hate to sound mercenary, but could you give us an estimate? I can do even better than that. I can tell you exactly. By cheating, horn swoggling, finagling, stealing, and perpetrating every neighbor known to man, the old horse thief accumulated one million dollars. <laughs> to the will. Um, it seems to be legal. It's uh, dated and signed by Mr. Stokely. Well, what's it say? It just says that uh, the million dollars is uh, concealed somewhere in the house and uh, it's up to us to find it. Oh, no. Now we have to go on a treasure hunt. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes, uh, here's, a, here's a clue. Look to the Prince of Love. Look to the Prince of Love? What does that mean? Well, your guess is as good as mine. Um, I suggest that we all turn in and uh, have a good go at it in the morning. Well, uh, I'll turn in, but I don't know how I'm going to sleep with all that's been going on. Oh, don't worry, honey, don't worry. I never go to a haunted house without a large supply of sedatives. Oh. This must be Stokely's idea of good, clean fun. Oh. Once a showman, always a showman. Please, just let's go. Oh. Oh. Hey, boss. 
Is this joint ain't haunted? Will you explain to me what's going on out there? Suppose you explain to me what's going on in here. Everybody's still alive and you have the effrontery to sit here eating by candlelight? Well, don't blow a gasket, boss. They come a long way to starve. After all, sweet, you can't expect us to do what we have to do on an empty stomach. Indian tradition. Never go on war path before first eating buffalo. Buffalo smuttlo. You have me read the will, didn't you? Yeah, buried treasure, and we expect our cut of it, too. Well, you can expect until doomsday. Nobody's been knocked off around here except Malcolm the butler. And I took care of him myself, and my daughter's taking care of that upstart Bobby. <laughs> you hear that, Chicky? They got two expert caretakers Quiet. here now. <laughs> Mr. Ripper have tradition, too. No do job, no get wampum. Put that in your teepee and smoke it. <laughs> I'm steaming. I'm steaming. I'm, I'm so exaggerated. What's the matter? I'm mad on that princess. What'd she do, boss? The only girl I ever loved. And now she and them tree slobs are gonna steal a million clams from them folks. And they didn't even invite me. Well, why don't you give her the finger, boss? No. No, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna find them clams and we're gonna keep them for ourselves. And we ain't gonna share with her nor nobody. Huh? How are you gonna do that, boss? Don't worry. He knows how we're gonna do it. <laughs> How are we going to do it, boss? How? Yeah. That's a good question. I'll tell you how is how. Who told you to ask me that question? Anybody tell you to ask me? Anybody tell you to ask me? Shh! Shh! Oh. Shh. Uh, don't bite. Let go. Hi! Hi! <laughs> Just me. I'm the only shusher. Thanks for talking to me, Chuck. I, I feel a lot better now. You know, this is the wildest coincidence that both our fathers were carnival operators and both were swindled by a con man. Maybe it isn't a coincidence. Stokely. That's his name. I remember. That's the name of the crook. Stokely. Yeah, yeah. Rings a bell with me, too. But if this is the same Stokely who was the culprit, then why would he be our benefactor now? Search me. Anyway, it'll, it'll clear up tomorrow. Good night, Lily. Uh, business arrangement. Well, that's my room over there, just in case. In case anything happens. Oh, okay. Good night, Jack. guys are a little crowded over there in the other bedroom, so I figured you wouldn't mind if I bunked here tonight. Oh, no, I don't mind. Okay, great. I was just ready to hit the sack myself. Be my guest. Uh, television repairman. Just trying to read myself to sleep. Thanks. What time is it? Oh, I don't know. 
It's two o'clock. It's wrong. A skull. There's a skull. What are you talking about? Well, that's funny. It was right there a minute ago. I don't understand it. Well, I understand. Anybody reading junk like this is bound to have nightmares. Go to sleep, will you? Ow. Oh, for crying out loud. Now, I'm gonna have to take something or I'll never get to sleep. Something dastardly afoot. Be brave, boys. Have courage. all over my house. Uh, something tried to grab me in the closet. It's a clock, creepy closet. Oh, the clock? Man, you are driving me out of my skull. No, the skull was over there. You're dreaming. Listen, I'm not kidding. This thing was nine feet tall. And hey, you just... listen to me. You get in there and you take a pill. Hey, Chuck, really, I... excited about. Bobby just had a nightmare, that's all. Where, where is Bobby? He, he went downstairs to get some warm milk. Oh, now, come on, kids. You're all acting like a bunch of old women. Scat, dig up. Come on. Come on. Hello, hello, operator. This is a recording. You have dialed a wrong number, stupid. I haven't dialed any number yet. Look, this is an emergency. Bobby, no! No! Oh! Thanks, loads. What's that? I don't know. Let's find out. Oh, keep away from that door. It's a real son of a gun. I thought I had voices saying words. Carry on. Cut! Cut! <laughs> what are you doing with books? Here, rip! Cut. He won't open his mouth. He's dead, stupid. Jerome E. Yeah. You see anything in the mirrors? Yeah. What? Dirt. You oh. stupid. Hey, come here. Stop. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Listen. Whoever hid that loop was pretty sharp. But if he thinks he can outshop Eric Von Zippa, he is stupider than anybody. You said it, boss. There ain't nobody stupider than you. Now stand back. Just stand back. I think there's something here.
This time, it's what I don't think. And what I don't think is, I don't think the loot is in this room. I wish I'd said that. <laughs> Tell us what we should do, boss. Well, look, we got a pretty good hole dug here, right? right? Right. So it shouldn't be a total loss. Let's see what it leads to. <laughs> I knew you'd come up with something, boss. <laughs> OK, let's go. Ladies first. That's you two. Oh. Come on, stupids. Let's go. Let's go. In there. Be careful. And wait for me, you guys. Wait for me in there. Don't go too far. Come on, come on. Wait for me now. I can't fasten. I you, can't fasten. You stupid. Now, now, oh. now. Watch your head. Oh. Don't let me poke out your eyes. Oh. Okay. Here I come, fellas. Not to worry. What? I thought I told everybody to go in the hole. Oh. Ah! Oh. Ah! 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 Hey, boss. Boss, what's wrong? I heard you screaming. What you? You did with the devil? The devil's got to get here and there, and he gets the whole rap, and he was there. Hey, boss, wake up, wake up, boss, wake up. Did you? Did you? Me? Yeah. Don't ever. Me. Now get in the hole. Get in the hole. Everybody here. We are safe as the First National Bank. Now, look, we can't possibly do anything more about this tonight, so why don't we get some shut-eye, huh? Shut-eye? Are you kidding me? Look, twice that, uh, that, that homicidal Philly sinister tried to knock me off, and that blob, he wasn't any fraternity brother either. The only blob is in your brain. No, okay, then look, Chuck, you tell me, who wrecked the living room, huh? Look, I told you, it's only somebody trying to get a head start in finding old Stokely's dough. What's to worry? Listen, do you believe in helping a dying man? Huh? Yes. Okay, I'm dying. Now, go downstairs, pick up the phone, and call the cops, please. All right. I wonder what monster you'll dream up next. Emergency, will you please? Sorry, the... you're being disconnected. Why?
just had a visitor who needed a haircut all over his all. Everybody here? Yeah. 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 Did anybody extra year? Hiram. Hiram. Yes, my dear. What are all these strange people doing here? They're on their way to my chamber of horrors. Oh, ho, ho, ho. just follow them, my dear. plastic surgery. Is he bleeding? You bunch of stupids. This ain't a human being. It's a dummy. Just like you are. Dummies. Oh, well, then they won't give us no more trouble then, right, boss? Right. But I will. Now, come on. Here's your head back, mister. Hey, 
Look at the monkey. He looks real. Oh, no. You can always tell a phony. Look, you see the kind of hair they got here? And over here, it happens to be different. Look at that. You see the kind of hair they got here? Ah! house they got real evil spirits if you only knew <laughs> that ripper has been lying to us we better get out of here while we still got our health yeah me too i go you want to keep your health we'll let you finish the job we're gonna find out what's going on in that chamber of horrors so move uh, mr ripper you've been mr ripper keep moving okay it's on me until i let them and that goes to you my fine feathered friend it's a chicken, always oh, a chicken. Come on, get moving, move, move, move. Chuck? Chuck? Lily, snap out of it. You've got to get out of here fast. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
hit him again. Cecily, Cecily, save the girl. Goo Goo, do something. Pull the lever. Treasure, Hiram. Manna oh, from heaven. Oh, no, it isn't. That stroke pays millions. He said, look to the Prince of Love. Cupid's little arrow did the trick. <laughs> Cecily, do something. Every penny of it is mine. Cecily, Cecily, what have you done? Wrapping things up for you, Hiram, baby. Your wicked lawyer has gone to collect his just desserts, and your rightful heirs now have the money. Congratulations, Hiram, on doing your good deed. And now, you're on your way to heaven. Yippee! Ow! Oh. Cecily, they said they'd make me young again. And they never go back on their promise. Ah. Well, you can't have everything. Why me? Why me all the time? Television repairman.
I can't explain it either. Now, Bob, that was a great house, and what a swinging party. I wish Mom would let us to have something like that here sometime. Well, glad to see you made it. Are you tired from dancing and laughing so much? This was a great and silly movie. And technically still a horror movie. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed this little blast from the past. I know it's not exactly what people think about when they think about a horror movie. But in the 60s, yeah, just about everything goes. Boy, does that say so much about the 60s. And now for some more silliness. Wait to see our Netflix and chill moment. This week on Netflix and Chill, so many people complain that all the movies look alike, so some of the producers decided to run with that and make a series of movies all based on current or popular horror or other genres. Tonight's movie is Haunted House 2, second one. It's a silly movie that hits all the tropes that you should be familiar with from watching the current horror movies or even some of the classics. It's exactly the same sort of things your kids will watch and look back and say, wow, those guys were nuts. So check it out, House, uh, Haunted House 2. Now this week, I'm truly sad to find out that Joanne Linville has passed away at 93. She played the Romulan commander in Star Trek, the original series, an episode that is considered pivotal by many Star Trek fans. In one of the newer reincarnations of the original Star Trek, her daughter plays her character and looks just like her. I think she was the very first female captain we ever got to see, and she will most certainly be missed. Well, that's our show for this week. Tune in next week for who knows what we'll have, but I'm sure it'll be fun, and I'm sure it'll be more fun with you watching. So until next week, remember, wash your hands like you've just murdered the rightful king. And that he's Bob, I'm Al, and we'll see you at the movies. Bob wants to remind you that when you pay with your debit card, you're paying with your past. But when you pay with your credit card, you're paying with your future. So, how do I get a refund for all of it? I just want out. Thank you.